SEGA Hello everybody, this is Kyrix, and I want to welcome you to the start of my latest Let's Play. This Let's Play is special, as it's the very first Let's Play I've recorded since I made the move from YouTube over here to Daily Motion. And, um... Well, I guess I don't have extras. Okay, let's look at the options. Then. <clears throat> anyway, um... See, the problem with these, with the whole reversal of controls, is I've got muscle memory for both, and I never know which one is going to trigger until it has, you know? So I can say, oh, well, I'm going to invert my aim. Well, I'm going to figure out that my body wants to do up and down normally, you know? Or I'll leave it normal. It's like, oh, why isn't it inverted? So I get to pain in the butt. But anyway, this is a mostly blind let's play. I know most of mine do tend to be mostly, but... Uh, I have played up to the very start of Chapter 3, or at least Page 3, because this is done in a book, you know, and there's story segments, and then there is the combat segments. And you have your prologue, you got 0, 1, 2, and 3, and I've done all the way up to 2, and started 3, but never actually did the things, you know, so... <clears throat> I played until you get your first tank, I assume it's your first tank, anyway. You might get more, you might not. But I played until you get that first tank, and that's beyond that I have no idea. And I really haven't touched this game in a year, so I've forgotten most of the details. So, let's begin, shall we? All I know is this is vaguely similar to World War II or something like that. <clears throat> Was 1935 EC. Two powers controlled the continent. In the east, the sun rose over the autocratic East European Imperial Alliance, otherwise known as the Empire. Because every RPG needs an empire. In the west, a network of loosely allied democracies formed the Atlantic Federation. Both I'm going to be singing It's a Good Day to Die, aren't I? mineral Ragnite for their survival. And its growing scarcity led to the inevitable war. Hostilities began in the east when the Empire aggressively crossed their western border. You know, you could have just gone to America, which is probably what it's called in here. The Empire, 
with its vast military superiority, struck hard. I love that they have lance guns. And putting the Federation on the defensive. Emboldened by their progress and momentum, the Empire set their sights beyond the borders of the Federation. In neighboring Gallia, a peaceful principality along the sea, they found their next victim. Gallia had long maintained its neutrality in the tensions between the two superpowers. But the rich stores of Ragnite under the Gallian soil proved too tempting for the Empire. It amassed troops along the eastern border and invaded with all the <coughs> force of an avalanche. Now this is what I mean by Gallia book. To arms. See, I have little episodes here. Like, here's the prologue, which is what we just watched. And then here's this. And you can go through all the different pages. I've gone up to three. So, let's begin. Let's view this episode. This one, I don't think really requires any interaction from me. This is kind of like a story for a lot of it. March, 1935. Outside the Gallian border town of Brule. Residents are leaving the town before the invasion, headed inland towards the capital. Except for this schmuck who's coming in for some weird reason. I haven't been down this road in years. It really hasn't changed very much. Were you expecting a sprawling metropolis? Already? Already hey there, guys. You're beautiful. Starting early this year. You're heading upstream, huh? How's the water? Dude, you're talking to fish. Sketchbook. Nobody appreciates appreciates art these days, you know. Haven't seen you around before. What's your name? Um, uh, my name's Welkin, and you are the one with the gun. We're with the Brutown Watch. I'm Alicia, Alicia Melkiot. So, I'm wondering what you've been writing in that little book you've got there. Imperial spies are in the area. He's sketching fish. This book is nothing, really. Uh, I was just sketching the fish and, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, I know. And you know there's a war on, don't you? Yes. All right, they're then, out to steal Mr. their... Artist. We'll talk about <clears throat> their strategic that. fish supplies or something. That's what you get for talking to fish, dude. You get arrested. That's the lesson most of us learn the hard way. Talk to fish, get arrested. Now, see, like I said, this plays out like a storybook for a lot of it. Like, uh... There's generally mostly story and, like, one battle scene... Well, like I fucking know. I've only played, like, three chapters of this book, but that's basically how it's worked up until the point where I've played. So, it's mostly just let's watch with a little bit of let's play thrown in. <clears throat> Flowers, bugs, and fish. You're not bad with a pen, are you? And you're still arresting him. They're really very good. Thank you. So you see, I really was just sketching. Maybe. Or, this could be some kind of secret code. And I intend to take my time finding out for sure. Woman! Great. Welks? Is that you? Isara! Oh, I know that voice. Perfect. What have you gotten yourself into now, Welkin? Wait. 
Don't you live at the old general's house? That's right. I'm General Gunther's daughter, Isara. You do know everyone's supposed to evacuate, right? Yes, I'm aware of that. My brother's here to help me move to the capital. I think that's... But that no. That may be difficult. I mean, unless you're willing to let him go, that is. Huh? Oh. Since there's really nothing else for me to do, I'm looking up the voice actors for this game. I apologize, but I was just doing my job, you know. I saw you with the notebook and thought you were a spy. You were doing yeah, it poorly. I'm really sorry about that. Thanks. <coughs> All right. Don't worry about it. I can see how I might have looked a little suspicious. Lux has a real passion for observing nature. That's why he's studying it. Isara is Laura Bailey. You'd recognize her from a lot of Funimation stuff. She was, uh, the one that comes to my mind was she was Keiko from Yu Yu Hakusho. Everyone keep your heads down! Over there! Alicia is voiced by, and I apologize if I butcher this name, Paulina Shaughnessy or something like that. She was both Sora and Yoshi from Digimon. Now, let's start the uh, the actual game, shall we? Welcome. You can handle a gun, right? Yeah. I mean, I made it through training anyway. Well, they're probably just a small scouting team. We should be able to take them out. I'm with you. All right, and uh, oh, I can save. Okay, menu, select save. Let's do that. Let's save the game. Anyway, <clears throat> Welkin is voiced by Dave Wittenberg, who I know at least as being. A couple of uh, voices from IGPX, he was a uh, Timma, he was the younger version of Rocket G. Let's see, he was in Haro, he is the computer club leader or computer club leader. And uh hmm. Yeah, that pretty much goes over the stuff I know. He was Feral Lad from Legion of Superheroes. He was Upchuck from Ben 10. And, uh... Ah, oh, he was Henry from, uh, Digimon Season 3. There, I have a voice I know now. Okay. So, let's begin the combat episode. Naturally, this is gonna give me a tutorial. Because I need it. Okay, here's the plan. Eliminate the scouts. Alright. If it takes me more than 20 turns, or if either Welkin or Alicia dies, I lose. Let's get started. Just stay calm and get it done. And obviously if I beat all the enemies, I win. Simple. I can do that. All right, this is semi turn based and semi real time. I see three of them. That's three too many. Stay sharp. Now, what I mean by this is my people take turns. Listen a second. There's something I should explain. But they're shooting in real time. Here we go. See? Basically, for every command point, I can take another turn. Okay, we got Welkin, we got Alicia, and we got a town watchman. Let's start with Welkin, as he's ostensibly our hero. And I, of course, want to get to cover, which is those sandbags up there.
Nope. So if I try and turn back, it doesn't really help me at all. Okay. Oh, finally. I was uh, uploading my episode 31 of Pokemon Emerald while this happened, and I've been trying all day, and it finally went through properly. Okay, time for my notoriously lousy M. Ooh, I have fine control with the control pad. Who knew? Nice. Crouch, and no. Go back over that thing. I want you to crouch where it's safe, and we will end that action. And he reloads. Now, I can select him again, but I don't want to. I want to have Alicia move up to support him. And what it's doing is it's showing me where the bad guys are. cover for her that I can get to. You yeah, see, it's telling me now about cover. Okay. We'll try this rock. No. That's no good. I'm gonna have to hope she can plug this guy then. No. Good shot, Alicia. Hmm. And we're gonna end that action, and we're gonna take you over immediately so we can get you back in the cup. Yes, it is. It is both your turn, and it is okay. better than I could have hoped for. I don't see any more of them. Okay, uh killed the enemy leader. Maybe ace bonus. I don't know. Okay, I guess I didn't get an enemy leader bonus or an enemy ace bonus. I definitely didn't get an enemy tank bonus. Uh is that an A rank or is that a Japanese symbol? I think I got good XP. And I'm guessing the 600 is money? I don't know. I didn't really play long enough for the game to stop being linear, if it ever does. And now we move on to the next episode thing. There's no other sign of the enemy. Good. Now, go keep watch and stay alert. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what should we do with the bodies, ma'am? We'll bury them. So it's begun. I'll do whatever it takes to protect the people of this town. I'll do it. Even going to war, I'll do it. Seeds from the lion's paw. It blooms white, small, simple, and strong. 
I want to be able to remember, once the war is over, that it wasn't all just people killing people. Sometimes tanks kill people. Even in war, there was also new life. Oh yeah, that too. On the 15th day of the third month of the year 1935, the Empire began its assault in earnest. A formal declaration of war was made upon Gallia. Though it was only a small front in a massive continental assault, what followed would prove that a tiny nation could best a military giant. These events would tell a story of tragedy hidden in the mists of time. A story of courage and of trust, of persecution and hate. And of love blooming even through the flames of war. What follows is a record of this conflict and of those who fought, lived, and died. And that will bring the prologue page to an end. Chapter 1, In Defense of Bruel. And that will also bring this video to an end. I'm going to try and do a chapter per video, for however long or short it's going to be. Um, I'm Kyrix, and this has been the first episode of Let's Play Valkyria Chronicles Blind. See you next week, people. Or next video, because... This might be a daily thing, but see you next time. Bye-bye.